The global chip scarcity has become a joke this year, thanks to widespread media coverage. I'm sorry, I forgot to do the dishes. There's a chip crisis everywhere. But like with many internet jokes, there's some truth behind it. The semiconductor chip issue exists and it has had a significant impact on our lives, to the extent that cars are more expensive and more challenging to construct. Computer manufacturers scramble to meet insatiable consumer demand for remote work and school gadgets. Countless products have been postponed, with release dates falling like dominoes into 2021 and the years ahead. Why can't China step in and fill the gap? Currently, the world's famed factory floor has swamped the global economy with goods and has frequently had to deal with domestic oversupply. Why has it largely remained on the periphery of the debate about resolving the global semiconductor shortage? Well, let's find out. The harsh reality is that China cannot create what the world requires in terms of semiconductors and chip-making machinery. Its semiconductor self-sufficiency remains low. We know that imported machinery is required for the chip foundries and production lines that have been established in China, and last year, $13.7 billion in semiconductor equipment was imported from outside, which resulted in a 30% increase over the previous year. Because of the severe shortage of such devices, second-hand ones from Japan are making their way to China, driving up costs significantly. Although the country has made considerable progress, particularly in the low-end procedures of the multi-step chip-making technique, it is still decades away from more sophisticated activities. Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corp, situated in Shanghai, is a few generations behind world giants such as Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co. and Samsung Electronics Co. Another concern is that the high silicon Kirin 9000, designed by Huawei's own in-house fabless chip design division, is a serious Chinese competitor to these advanced US CPUs. A fabless chip maker does not have its fabrication facilities, known as fabs or foundries, in the jargon of semiconductor manufacturing. Until this year, Huawei's high silicon chips were manufactured by Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, but strengthening US sanctions rendered that impossible. Suppose China enables well-connected enterprises such as semiconductor foundries and university research groups to fail. In that case, the country's financial situation must be far worse than its announcements of multi-billion dollar investment funds would suggest. This could sound like China's on its last straw since its chip makers and designers appear to be cash strapped. Given its exposure to the US and Indian markets, Huawei going hat in hand to the Shenzhen government is unsurprising. However, other Chinese chip makers with few links to the US are also experiencing financial troubles. Only 16% of China's chips are manufactured locally now, which is the least sophisticated in every category. China unveiled a second big fund last year with a $29 billion investment in semiconductor development. It remains to be seen whether China can repeat its accomplishment this time in the face of tough US sanctions. China made chip manufacturing its main civilian technological objective during the previous decade but it has produced nothing. Even before many of its prominent enterprises were subject to export and financial restrictions imposed by the United States, China demonstrated its inability to create a competitive position in the market for relatively simple memory chips, let alone complicated microprocessors. China is stocking now moving targets. Consider lithography, a fundamental stage in chip manufacturing in which light transfers circuit layouts to a film, which is then utilized to manufacture individual microprocessors. The development of so-called extreme ultraviolet tools for lithography can take more than 10 years, and precise machinery has become increasingly expensive. Because the sector is capital and knowledge intensive, it has consolidated around just three competitors. Perhaps the only thing that is definite about the global chip shortages is that people are still determining when they will end. Based on industry statistics and interactions with our clients, we expect the semiconductor market to remain tight until 2023. Overall, the answer to this burning question is no. When every company is in the same position, there is no straightforward solution to avoid a shortage of semiconductors and escalating costs. There is, however, a significant difference between a leaky kayak and a powerboat capable of handling difficult waters. Even if China makes significant chip design and technology advances, it can't build such chips for local use or export without the equipment to manufacture them. Because of its inability to manufacture this equipment and foreign players' control of the machines, the country will depend on the global supply chain for some time. Despite the concerns about China's chip-making ambitions, the country is unlikely to step in soon to fill the present supply gap. China's primary role in the global semiconductor industry is that of an assembler and integrator, that is, the placement of chips on circuit boards.